In this first part of my final exam review, I'll be helping YouTuber Selena Sanchez prepare for her final and understand stoichiometry. Now, some of these questions are part of my stoichiometry notes that has each one of these types of questions going from grams to grams, liters to grams, and so much more. So head over to melissamaribel.com or click the link in the description box to buy the notes and follow along. All right, you ready to do some stoichiometry? So these four conversion factors, uh, how I want you to think of stoichiometry and these, these word problems, they're kind of like puzzles. And the puzzle pieces are these four main conversion factors. So these conversion factors are going to tell you how to connect everything and how to, you know, how to move from one unit to a completely different unit. So the first one that I want you to write down is molar mass. So we know, but I'm still gonna have you write it down, that molar mass allows you to go from grams to moles or vice versa. So literally just writing, you know, a double arrow if that makes sense to you, or if not, then grams to moles and moles to grams. That's when you know I have to use the molar mass. The next one was whenever you have to change the compound, that's when you're gonna do a mole to mole ratio. So, because it goes from one, you know, moles of one compound to a completely different compound. So these are just hints, like, so when you know what to do next. And then we know a mole to mole ratio comes from a balanced equation. The next one is Avogadro's number. So this one, this one seemed like you were okay with, but we're still gonna write it down just in case. That one goes from moles to any one of these units, right? Atoms, molecules, particles, formula units, <laughs> and vice versa. So these can still keep going back and forth. And the last one that you will potentially see uh, is known as uh, STP or liters at STP, right? Standard temperature and pressure. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and I'll go over each one. But this was where our moles uh, equals 22.4 liters, and we'll, we'll go from there. So I'll, I'll explain it in a second. But these are the four main conversion factors that I want you to know because these are the ones that are going to help you fill in the gaps of, oh, wait, I'm stuck. I don't know. All right? So you're pooling from one of these conversion factors. So for molar mass, um, how do we fill with molar mass? The masses of each one, and you just add them. I think you're fine with molar mass. So this is where I had, uh, like, let's say if, you know, what when we use molar mass, we're going from grams to moles or vice versa, moles to grams. And just, this is just a representation of how we always want to align the units so they cancel, right? Moles and moles and so on. I think you're okay with that now. All right, multiple -mole ratio. Let's talk about that one. So multiple -mole ratio, as we said before, we always use it when we're trying to change the compound. And this is, this is once again, going from moles of one compound to a different one and I have that here. And we always align our units across so they can cancel. You're gonna keep hearing me say that. And then this is going to be where you're gonna find a mole to mole ratio. So there's actually two different places that you're gonna find a mole to mole ratio. The first one is going to be any coefficients that are in our balanced equation. And as I mentioned, if, if there is nothing in front, then it's gonna be a one, all right? So if there's no coefficient there, assume that it's one. The last place that we're gonna find a multiple ratio is let's say they just gave you the compound. So if they just gave you the compound, I know it's gonna be the subscripts in my compound. So like it, how many oxygens do we have? Oh, well, there's three times two, so six. You know, that would be six moles of oxygen. How many moles of uh, nitrogen do we have? Only two moles. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So then that those are the two different places we can find a multiple ratio. That being said, um, why don't you try this one? Go ahead and pause the video and try this question out. If a multiple ratio allows us to go from this compound to this compound, right? Right now, you only have the starting compound. You don't have the ending compound. Yeah. So that's what you need. So you canceled out the moles of NaI, right? Now you need the moles of what you're finding, which is I2. So how many moles of I2 do we have? One. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So these two cancel right? Mm -hmm. Not all stoichiometry questions are going to take like two conversion factors or even three conversion factors. Some might even just take one. So, and how you know that, by the way, um, is, well, this is just going from moles to moles, right? It's not going from grams to grams, or it's not going from grams to, I don't know, molecules. Um, this hint is kind of like already telling you to use a multiple ratio since you already have the two units of moles are the same, it's just the compound that needs to be changed. So same thing, I want you to just write, what are you given, what are you finding, set it up, 
and then we'll go over it again. Give this question a try. Stoichiometry is just a way to cancel out units to get to the unit that you want. But that's all stoichiometry is. All right, so, so yes, like you started off with your given, right? Yeah. And what you're finding is where you end. So that's why you're seeing what you start is literally where you start. What you end with is always on top. And then the conversion factor in between is most likely going to be on the denominator because that's what's canceling out. So the whole point of this, we just want to cancel out units to get to the unit that we want. Okay, but let's do one just, just in case, just in case. Try this question out. As Selena's working on it, you should be too. So pause the video and try this out on your own and we'll go over it together. Where I always want you to start off with is what are you given? Like, what does this question give you? 174 grams of CO whatever. Carbon monoxide, correct, so CO. So then that automatically tells me where to start. Like, since that's the only information that's given, right, that's your starting point. What is this question asking you to find? Molecules of oxygen. Perfect. So, and then remember that oxygen is never going to be by itself because it's known as a diatomic molecule, meaning it's going to exist in pairs. That's all it means. It means there's a two subscript. Okay. <laughs> that makes sense? So oxygen is always going to exist in pairs, so it's never just going to be O, it has to be O2. So then I know, okay, well, I'm finding molecules of O2. So right then and there, your given is going to act as your starting point, and your finding is going to act as where you end. Now we just have to figure out the chunks in between. Mm -hmm. So if we want to get from grams of carbon monoxide to then a completely different molecule, what allows us... Actually, what should we do first? If we know for sure we're starting off with grams of carbon monoxide, what should we convert to first? Um, molar mass? We're gonna use molar mass, beautiful. The four different conversion factors that I was talking about, all of them end up equaling moles. So if, if at some point you have no idea where to start, convert to moles and you're pretty much like 99% guaranteed that it's gonna be okay, okay? so. If you have no idea where to start, start with your given, convert that to moles, and then keep going and see where else you can go with it. So in this case, we are going to use the molar mass of carbon monoxide to go from grams of CO to then moles of CO. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to, that's our first step. We're going from grams of CO to moles of CO. And then from there, we, we now have moles of carbon monoxide or CO. So where do you think we should go next? to change, because we want to change the compound, right? We don't want CO, we want O2. The multimole ratio thing? Beautiful, yes, yes. Have confidence. You, you know more than, than, than you're showing. I know you know more. So moles of O2, we are going to use that based on our multimole ratio. So what is our multimole ratio? Like, where do we get that information? The sides of the... Yes, correct, the balance equation, perfect. So then I know that so far, we started off with our given, right? And then we would find our molar mass of carbon monoxide, just adding carbon's mass plus oxygen's mass. And then those two would then cancel. And now we have, we're at moles of CO. And then next, we're gonna be using the multiple ratio. So what should be on the bottom and what should be on top based on our multiple ratio? The CO should be on the bottom. Perfect, how many moles of, of CO do we have? Two. What about for uh, O2? Uh, I don't know. So for O2, there's nothing in front. If there's nothing in front, assume there's a one. Mm -hmm. So then there, there would just be one on top. Okay. Is this making sense? Yeah. So then now that we're finally at moles of O2, well, we got to the compound that we wanted, right? O2 or the molecule that we wanted, O2. We don't have the correct unit though. We have moles, but we want molecules. So what allows us to go from moles to molecules? Avogadro's number. Beautiful. So then from there, I know Avogadro's number is next. Do you remember Avogadro's number? 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Beautiful. That's what's next. All right, so then that allows us to get to molecules of O2, which is what we wanted. From there, of course, we just have to multiply straight across and divide by these two multiplied. Good with this? Mm -hmm. And then that'll give us our molecules. Okay. Questions so far? No. Okay. I'm going to have you try one. Okay. Pause the video and try this out. I don't know what to do. Okay, so what was your first step that you did? Um, 12.5 grams of any 2O times something. Okay, and then what are we trying to convert to? Grams of sodium. Correct. 
We said that if you don't know what to do first, what should you convert to? Um, moles. Moles. How do we convert to moles? How do we go from grams to moles? The molar mass. Perfect. So then what do we need at that step? It's molar mass. Exactly. Um, Did you have your periodic, periodic table? If, if not, I can tell you the masses of Na. Na has a molar mass of 22.99. So 44 plus 16? Yes. Whatever that is. <laughs> Keep going with that. I, I, I literally want you to write it down. Okay, 60. And then it was a 45.98 to 22 times, 22.99 uh, times 2. 22.98, okay. So 61.96. It should have been 98, sorry. Uh, it, so the, the NA mass of that was 22.99. I don't know if, if you heard me say 98. That was for something else. Mm -hmm. So we should have gotten 61.98. Okay. Keep setting that up, see what cancels, and then keep going from there. What canceled out? The grams of Na2O. Perfect. So then we're at moles of Na2O. Mm -hmm. But do we want do we want that compound? No. How do we change it? I don't know. Okay. So to change a, a compound, we always do a mole to mole ratio. Mm -hmm. So that's what's next. So whenever we get it down to moles, and then now we want to switch the compound, you're going to do a mole to mole ratio. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. So let's do a mole to mole ratio. All right, so no, you can keep going, yeah. I'm just seeing if I have, I don't want to put the next part. <laughs> what do we get for our multiple ratio? Um, I don't know what I should put on the top or the bottom. So look at the previous unit that you had. So always make sure you align the same units across so they can cancel. So if on top previously you had the moles of uh, Na2O, mm -hmm. then that should now be on the bottom, right? Because we want those two to cancel. Do you hear what I'm saying? No. So you had this so far, right? These two canceled? Yeah. You had your moles of N, N2O. So we always want these two to be across from each other so they can cancel. So then this tells us the moles of Na2O should go on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then what, what we want to get to next should be on top, which should have been our moles of Na. Hmm. That part confused me. This part? Yeah. Did it make sense that why these moles and moles have to be where they are currently? Yeah. What part confused you? Like, and why? Um... Like, I never would have, like, if I was doing this on my own, I would have got stuck here and just, like, called it quits because I didn't, wouldn't have known to put the two moles of whatever. Like, I didn't understand where the two or the four came from, but, like, I get it now, but... So it's a good thing you get it now. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. Okay. I'm, I'm going to re-explain it just, and we're going to do plenty of these, by the way. So the next question, we're going to keep doing this, and then I'm going to have you try again. Um, plus, at the end, of course, I'm going to give you practice problems. So this is going to be a huge chunk of it, and I tell you that because you've probably seen on your exams already, but stoichiometry is like the heart of chemistry. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to re-explain this again, all right, J just so we can really get this, this going. Whenever we, we don't know where to start, start with your given value and convert it to moles, right? That we know. Next, whenever we're trying to change the compound, we do a mole to mole ratio. Mm -hmm. Good with that. And then, of course, if we then want to go back, which is our last step here, was if we want to go back to moles to grams, you're still going to use the molar mass. So I'm going to keep going with this part. We we were good with the molar mass. Um, it was the mole to mole ratio that was that where we kind of stumbled. And then the reason why I knew it was a mole to mole ratio was because our unit was already in moles, right? And where else can I go? I can't just instantly, I don't want to jump back down to go to grams because that, would, that wouldn't that would give me what I want. So a mole to mole ratio comes from our balanced equation, right? The four moles of Na come, comes from this balanced equation. That was our reactant. Our product was then two moles of Na2O. That went on the bottom. Always align our units so they can cancel out. Now that we did that, we're on our third step, which is going from the moles of Na to the grams of Na, and we're going to use the molar mass of, of sodium. From there, I'm going to put that on top. And then the reason why I place one mole on the bottom is once again so it can cancel out. So that's, that's how I want you to see this, is if you're not sure what to do next or how to align the units, if you've gotten at least to the first step, it tells you what unit comes next. Mm -hmm. Right? It tells you, oh, this has to be aligned on the opposite place. Do we see that pattern? Yeah. Okay. You're doing great. <laughs>
If you found this review helpful, then you'll really enjoy my complete guide to stoichiometry, which has even more examples and common test questions. Head over to melissamaribel.com or click the link in the description box to buy the notes. And I'll see you in the next video covering limiting reactants.